Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to the IEM America's Championships. We are in the middle of an intense series in between two players who really want a plane flight to Germany. That's right, the winner of this series will gain the second and final spot to represent the Americas in Germany at GamesCon coming up on August 17th? August 17th. I want to say August 17th. I'm fairly certain that is the day, but anyway, who are these two players? Well, spawning in at the 9 o'clock position. We have the green Zerg player, E.G. Idra, won the first game, lost the second game. We may talk about that a little bit later, but spawning in at the 3 o'clock position, his opponent, the blue Protoss player, Fnatic MSI, TT1. TT1 just equalized the series, and these games have been very interesting indeed. I mean, game one was back and forth. TT1 went for a forge fast expand on Metalopolis and defended. Roach aggression from Idra, but Idra did enough damage there to have a pretty clear advantage. And then TT1 scared us all by almost taking down the third of Idra. But Idra was able to just spawn too many units. He had so many drones. He had like 53 drones to like the 24 of TT1. And Idra was just able to pummel unit after unit at the Protoss ball of TT1 that consisted of just gateway units. Um, and then in game two, TT1 went for a really fast six gate push with mostly zealots was able to snipe the third of Idra like by a hair not even kidding the last swipe of the zealot took down the hatchery and then TT1 followed that up with an expansion which he then cancelled and just came forward with an immortal and so many sentries and stalkers it was just too much for Idra to handle so this series is tied one to one this is game three and it is a best of five so don't go anywhere after this game we are guaranteed two more games including this one TT1 doing some scouting with this probe. He's an early spawning pool and a guess. Not too early. Probably standard. Um, but Idra taking a hatchery soon after. The probe not able to block that off. You always want to try to do that. When you have a probe chilling at your opponent's base, try to delay that expansion. Always try. Idra's actually really good at preventing probes from actually delaying that. He brings two pro he brings two drones down to prevent the probe from like throwing down any pylons. He uses one drone to attack the pylon and the other drone to prevent the actual probe from putting down the pylon. So, really interesting play from Idra thus far, putting down, yeah, managed to get that hatchery down. Pretty cool play so far, but the story here is TT1 Forge Fast Expanding once again, even though it's Shattered Temple. A lot of Protoss players will be like, Shattered Temple, I'll never Forge Fast Expand there because it's like a little bit harder to defend, but I mean, it's manageable. I mean, obviously players do it, so it is manageable. So TT1, it's not like it's the first time he's done this, but some players feel a little bit more comfortable about defending against Oh, early pressure. Then others, TT1, definitely one of those that feels comfortable. So, putting down that Forge Fast Expand, getting the expansion down really fast, it gets finished even before Idris does. And uh, I've talked to a lot of people. Protoss versus Zerg on this map, there's a lot of mixed uh, decisions here. A lot of Zerg players a lot of Zerg players think, hey, it's, it's imbalanced. I mean, the Protoss gets an easy third, right? But other Zerg players like it, so it's back and forth. Don't ask me. Um, I choose not to engage. I'll engage in that debate. I have my own opinions, but... Who cares about my opinions, right? Anyway, Zergling's coming forward from Idra. He's poking forward at this probe. The probe gets up here. Sees that guys are mining gas, but that's standard. Actually, a little bit more than 100. So, theoretically, he could have clicked on that gas and seen, like, okay. If it's at 12... It's, it starts at 2,500. And you can click on the gas and see how much gas is there. Um, 2312. So, that means those, those, those drones have mined more than 100 gas, which is more than necessary for Metablock boost, boost speed upgrade. And Zergs usually take those guys out of gas at 100, so they can focus on their drone production and additional expansions, additional queens, and spine crawlers. But Idra, keeping guys in gas and taking a really fast layer. So, I'm wondering what's going to happen here. I have a sneaking suspicion I know what it is. But I can keep my mouth shut. I'd rather be, uh... I'd rather not say anything than be wrong, if you know what I'm saying. But anyway... Idra getting that decently fast layer. Really curious to see what he does. Keeping guys in gas. So has two gases taken. Taking a third. So three gases taken. Could this be a Hydralis push? Could it be fast mutas? Could it be fast infestors? I mean, mutas and infestors, usually you take these two really fast. So we'll have to see. Layer is done. And is it going to be what I suspected? Oh, a probe is here. Whoa, where'd that probe come from? He does not see a layer at the main. And only sees that being made at the natural. So... If Idra can kill this, he can actually full TT1, but TT1 may discover the lair. Uh, oh, he doesn't see the lair. So he didn't see the lair, and yes, it is a Hydra Den. So Idra looks like he's going to go for a two-base Hydra timing push here. Um, 
Ooh, a Nidus Worm too. So this is really interesting. We'll keep an eye on that. So Idra has a Nidus Worm going down, has an Overlord in the side of TT1's base. And a weakness of this opening is that you're delaying your gateways a lot because you're building a lot of cannons here at your natural because you're afraid of you're afraid of these timing pushes. But Idra is just going to circumvent that, build the Nidus Worm in the back of TT1's base and hope he doesn't spot it. And this could work. Hydras are on the way already. Nidus Worm Network is almost done. And Idra is making exclusively Hydralis at this point. Going to be loading up, them up into the Nidus. And yes, that's exactly what they're going to do. This Overlord is going to come forward and it is going to lay a Nidus. Is TT1 going to see this? Oh man, TT1 has a probe over here. Lays down a pylon, but there is like, this is the only dark spot in TT1's base. And Idra's going to lay a Nidus there. The Nidus is about halfway done. And TT1 is not going to spot this. And he may die. There are only three cannons in the natural expansion, nothing in terms of units barring a two, two stalkers and a sentry, and TT1 hears that sound and is like, oh my god, and Idra lays down the Nidus. A bunch of Zerglings flow into the main base of TT1 along with the Queen, laying down a Creep Tumor, evacuating back into the Nidus. That was a little hysterical, but anyway, Hydra is coming out as well, doing so much damage. The Queen coming back out, but then going back in, and Zerglings wrecking havoc into the main of TT1. Hydra is coming forward as well, Idra making nothing but Hydras in that production tab. Could Idra take a 2-1 lead over TT1 in Game 3? It could very well happen. TT1 in a lot of trouble, forced to engage with a lot of probes. You never want that to happen. A cannon has completed, but it will go down immediately to these Hydralis. And TT1 is losing all of his harvesters down 69 to 28 supply in his natural. He's fine, but it doesn't matter. In his main, everything is dying. These Hydralis going to town. Pylons, cannons, gateways, all at the mercy of Idra's Hydras. And there's the GG from TT1. So Idra will take a 2-1 lead over TT1. That means Idra needs to win one more game, and he gets a spot in Germany to represent the Americas. Ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere. Jumping in to Game 4 extremely soon. This is the IEM America Championships.